So I first want to thank Ken for organizing this. It's always uh, uh, always great to uh, to come to the south during the February. Like you escape the Boston cold. Um, okay. So uh, uh, first, uh, the mo motivation of the work is something called the L space conjecture. So, uh, so this is due to uh, Boyer, Gordon, uh, Nelson. Also so the conjecture uh, sort of uh, say the three things are equivalent. Oh, I should say first the manifold with M, B, a closed, uh, irreducible, it's a printable, uh, three manifold, and then following statements are equivalent. So the first statement is um, if not an L space and the second statement says the fundamental group is left portable, and the third statement is is manifold. It means uh, a core interval top variation. Okay. Let me first explain. Uh, what they are. First, M, uh, L space. What is the L space? So L space uh, is a manifold. First, you want M is a rational homology sphere. And so is the rank of the, the head version of our flow homology is equal to the, the number of elements in, uh, in H1. Then this is an uh, L space, and the uh, uh, example would be a length space in the L space. Uh, so, uh, then what is the left orderable? So, a group. G is is left orderable if you have a uh, you have a total order. There it is a total order, and so this order is preserved by left multiplication. So, so just is is uh, f less than G, then if and only if you multiply any element from the left, uh, this left order is preserved. And well, time variation, and uh, people have already talked about uh, uh, a lot in, the, uh, in this conference. I don't want to say more about this. Uh, so, uh, so that's uh, sort of. Uh, the motivation for when, what I'm trying to, uh, what I'm talking about today. Let me first uh, say a few known directions. First, uh, you have Oswald's double. And well, you have to combine uh, Oswald's doubles work with some result plus foliations actually due to Bolden and 
dependent on a Kazaz robbers. So, so they proved that if you have a top correlation, that implies that it's not not an L space. So that's pretty much the only the totally known direction. So this direction is known, and there's some uh, some, uh, some other works. And for example, if you uh, there's a theorem of uh, uh, category downfield. Uh, so they prove that at least for for Z homogeneous here, then you can have a positive correlation that implies the fundamental group is left affordable. So you have uh, well we have certain uh, hypothesis. So the three implies. Um, for certain special manifold, this conjecture is true. Uh, if you combine the work of Dave Gabay and uh, and uh, uh, Boyer and Robson, <coughs> so so they prove this L space conjecture is true. Yes. The first bad number is positive. Okay? So we got by for the first bad number is positive, then you always have a top correlations, then the other directions are uh, uh, approved by the boy in Robson. Um, and also, uh, more recently, you got to combine several people, so Boyer and McClay. And uh, Hanselman and uh, Rasmussen, Rasmussen. So, uh, so this is true for graph manifolds. Yeah, for the previous bullet, uh, if the big number is positive, are you just not in L space by definition? Yeah. This is not an L space by definition because definition requires this to be a uh, uh, rational homology sphere. Okay, so uh, uh, so that's the, some notable uh, known results, and uh, uh, Steve probably uh, speaks some more results in this direction uh, this afternoon. So let me. Mention one theorem. So this is due to Sarah Rasmussen. So she proved that, well, it's a long statement. Let's suppose M is as a closed orientable irreducible three manifold with with the Hegar genus two. Uh, and also let's suppose uh, the fundamental group is left orderable and and she had this condition. So if the the group representation presentation of the fundamental group. Uh, so this is not uh, any group presentation. So this is the group presentation you get from a Higar diagram uh, from from uh, a genus two Higar diagram. Uh, Higar splitting, uh, well, another 
uh, has uh, so this group presentation require it has no uh, so the relator so it's uh, each relator uh, two relators each relator is a is a long word so you want the uh, the relator this word has no subword that a trivial in the fundamental group. The total work, of course, is trivial, but you don't want any subword that's a trivial in the fundamental group. Then M is manifold, then it's uh, co orientable of foliation. So uh, uh, I first heard uh, uh, heard this uh, theorem from uh, Sarah's talk. That was uh, at the, the Obawafa. That was three years ago, not three weeks ago. <laughs> 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 so sort of uh, got me thinking uh, something to do during the pandemic. Uh, so uh, now let me write down the theorem. So the theorem is basically, I can remove this condition. So the theorem is, again, suppose M is a closed, irreducible, reachable, again, with the key guardian is this two, then if the fundamental group is an F orbital, that implies that the manifold has a core interval of foliation. So this, this condition that is removed that for all manifold with the with the Okay? Uh, so now let me uh, tell you how how the proof goes. So left orbital implies Sarah's condition. So hmm? the left or left orbital implies the top foliation. Right, but it, does it also imply the hypothesis for osmosis? So, so the so it's basically the same as the Sarah's result, but just with this condition, with this hypothesis removed. Oh, okay. So with no, with no condition, just he removes the hypothesis. Okay. Yeah. If you have a closed irreducible three manifold with a bar genus two, is it known that all like two generator presentations come from bigger diagrams? So like, not, not geometric ones. If you assume it's genus two. Uh. That's Sorry, this is that probably not. Yeah. Oh, my, my guess would be no. Was it Kobayashi had some papers about this around 25, 30 years ago? Mm -hmm. I think it was Kobayashi. But I just can't think of anything else. Are there separate fiber spaces with rank 2 and genus 3 or something? Uh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Okay. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, good, uh, 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 good example. Uh, yeah, like Alex said, that there are uh, side fiber space with the uh, with the uh, with the rank two, but we are genus three, right? Right. That made that. I'm not sure assuming it's genus two. Yeah, so assuming it's genus two, but uh, but it's not. But assuming genus two, I don't know. Yeah. All right. So the Basic idea is using Higar diagram. Try to uh, do some construction. So this is a little bit idea. So idea is you try to use a Higar diagram. A genus two. Uh, 
Esto es lo que quiero la verdad. ¿eh? Well, use a Hegar diagram uh, so that you have a Hegar surface. On each side, you have a complete set of radial disks. And you can use the Hegar surface plus those disks to construct a branch surface. So what is the branch surface? Uh, let me just draw up uh, one picture. Let's say this is the Hegar surface. Now, on the two sides, you have a set of uh, uh, regional disks. Here. Okay, so you get a two complex. So you get two complex, then so this branch surface is construct depend on the group element. So you can uh, well if you regardless of anything, you can always uh, sort of uh, pinch this into a branch surface. Let me just uh, draw uh, a picture so you can make the the one skeleton of the two complex into 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 cups. Okay, so uh, uh, without any condition, you can always do something like this. But then the question is, why is this useful? Uh, so you 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 construct a branch surface, and so the branch surface. A lot of time, a branch surface can carry a lamination. So, a lamination is carried by a, a branched surface. So, this is sort of uh, similar to uh, to the a train track carrying a bunch of curves. Uh, let me do a one dimensional lower picture. So if you thicken the branch surface a little bit, uh, then you can view this as uh, an integral, band, uh, integral bundle over a branch surface. Then if you can put your lamination, lamination is uh, it's basically a closed set with the foliated closed set, not the foliated the whole manifold, but the foliated closed set. And you can, if you can, iso do some isotope, put your lamination into this neighborhood so that it is transverse to this vertical integral. This is for the carry by a branch surface. Okay, so you can, well, you can always do this making a, a two complex into a branch surface. And then you have to, uh, well, the thing you have to do, you have to modify this. <clears throat> you have to modify this uh, by some operations. Uh, and then the, the left order of the fundamental group sort of tell you that you can get a lamination carried by, by B carried by the branch surface. Okay, so that is sort of uh, just uh, depend on using loops and uh, comparing which loop has uh, is uh, which loop is bigger, and you can construct this lamination, and then. The final step will be the lamination. The lamination, should say, on the extent the lamination to to a top foliage. Okay, so that's the that's the final step. Uh, so this step is sort of relatively easy, and 
when can you do this is uh, is uh, is quite technical. Okay. All right. So that's the idea, sort of uh, very very elementary kind of ideas. Actually, the construction a lot of them is just like playing games using the left order and. The construction of the lamination is sort of like playing games. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm just curious. Like, is this sort of approach also what Sarah did to prove her theorem? Uh, or you do a separate uh, it's approach? It's different. Right? It's different. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, what Sarah, what Sarah did was, uh, let's say. So you have this um, this theorem. Uh, 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 if you have if the if the group is uh, is left orderable, if the group is left orderable, then this this group is a subgroup of homeo homeo R. Okay. So once you have this, you can you can use this use this to construct a uh, foliation of, uh, of let's say this is a Higar surface, Higar surface cross basic cross R, the integral. So in the neighborhood of Higar surface, you can come using this homeo R to construct foliage. Okay, then she was with her condition, she could extend this foliation throughout the two hand bodies. And I have to do more. Uh, uh, modification. I, I I don't know the exact detail, but that's the that's the idea. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right. Cool. All right. So now let's let me tell you how you're gonna construct a brain surface using a left order of a fundamental group. Uh, let's be more ambitious at the beginning. Let's construct. Uh, Let's take a, a arbitrary genius here. Let's say, okay, let's, say uh, let's say let's say given a figure diagram. Figure diagram, let's say of genus genus G. Okay. Uh, well, a lot of the construction actually works for, for all genus, but uh, but the technical stuff only works for genus too. Okay. So let's say take a uh, uh, genus G here, Higar diagram. So uh, let's say that means your manifold is for the Higar splitting. You have uh, uh, the union of two handle bodies. So those are the handle bodies, and the sigma is the is the Higar surface. Okay. So now in this first handle body. Let's say I have a uh, uh, marginal disk U1, U2, the UG. So this is in the first hand of body. And I have the V1, VG, let's say in the second hand of body. Okay? And you don't want to use uh, any set of disks. You want to assume, assume, uh, assume they have some sort of uh, minimum <coughs> intersection property. Assume certain minimum intersection property. Uh, so uh, the the most sort of uh, uh, elementary thing you can do, uh, you can change certain disk to a better disk by something we call wave move. Uh, for example, let me give you an example. Let's say we have um, if you if you take the boundary of those disk, so the boundary of disk. Uh, Divide your bigger surface into a bunch of regions. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's say suppose this is U1, this is also U1, and let's say this is if you 
assign an orientation. Actually, oops, this is U1. If you see a certain region that on the boundary of this region, you have two arcs that both belong to U1, and they have this opposite orientation, then you can do something called a wave move. So that is, you can, this, you can connect those two arcs using an edge. This is called a wave. So this is called a wave. What you can do about this is, well, because it's the orientation, because of this orientation, so if you connect them together, let's say eventually that's going to close this up and now go from here, close this up. If you, uh, if you divide this, if you cut the arc along the wave, then you can split this into two loops. And it's sort of routine to to know that now those both of the loops bond disks. Okay? So you can just replace replace U1 with let's say let's say with this one. With the with a long, well this, this one may be parallel to the existing one. It cannot be both be parallel. Okay? So maybe pa parallel to the existing one, so let's say take one which is not parallel, just replace U1 with this one, and that going to reduce the number of intersections with uh, with uh, uh, with the other set of curves. Okay, so this is uh, like a, uh, the uh, the basic kind of thing you can do, and a lot of times that's that's well, it's not all you need uh, because eventually you have, you want to do something uh, technical. Yeah, you need something more, but, but for the construction of uh, of the branch of it, that's pretty much all, uh, all you need. Okay, so you assume this has some minimal kind of intersection properties. Uh, then we take those two complex. So we take this two complex. Uh, let me draw a. So sorry, uh, when you say you were describing wave moves, so is this certain minimal intersection property being wave reduced or something more? Than, or you said right. something more than that? Uh, well, for for the construction of the branch surface lamination, that's that's all you need. A wave reduced. Okay. But I mean, the actual theorem, and uh, you have to prove something more to go further. To go further, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's possible. It's just because I'm not smart enough because I need something more. So eventually, when I prove this, I put those through everything I did. So and uh, I do need the. Uh, I didn't need some uh, stronger property of this, but it looks like the wave reduce is maybe the only thing. Right. All right. So now let's play the game. We have a uh, Higar surface. For the Higar surface, and um, let's say we have. Reading the disks. So that's the one. Let's just use two as an example. And at the bottom, you have V1. So you have a bunch of Marino disks from the Giga splitting. Uh, then uh, we pick some points. We pick a couple points. Let's say we have pick a point X in the first hand of body. So that's the top is the first hand of body, the bottom is the hand of body V. And then pick another point Y. In the bottom hand of body, I want x to be in the complement of those disks. So that's in the disk. You delete a y, a g, and y is in the complement of those disks. Okay. Um. Then this 
you go down then. Uh, with this minimum intersection property, the Hegar diagram divides this Hegar surface into a bunch of regions. Sigma into disks. Well, theoretically, you could have non simply connected regions, but that's sort of ruled out by the irreducible. Uh, or minimum property. Because if you have a non disk region, then that means you can find a simple closed curve. And that curve is going to bound a disk in, in, in any of the two handle bodies. So the two disks can form a sphere. That sphere intersects the Higar surface in this one curve. That means either the manifold is re uh, reducible or this, uh, this is stabilized. So that means you can you can get a lower genus here. Okay. So uh, so the complement of those curves is gonna be a bunch of disks. Right? And now uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna connect x to y using a bunch of loops, uh, a bunch of arcs. So there's a disk, let's call this uh, uh, s naught, s1, let's say sk. Okay, so those are the bunch of regions in the Higar surface. Uh, now for, for each disk, sigma i, uh, si, sorry, so let's say this is si, this is disk, I'm going to connect x to y, uh, avoiding all the disks, because the, those disks divide this kind of body into a, a three ball, you can always avoid all the disks and to reach all the, uh, each, each region, then I just want this arc punches through this SI exactly once and miss all other disks. Okay, and I put a, a direction and I call this arc. Okay, uh, and I do that for every disk. Okay, okay. Um, and also I'm gonna I'm gonna fix a special disk. That's not. Uh, right now we just pick any disk. You fix fix ones. That's not. Uh, of the special disk. Uh, so this loop, that, this is L, this is okay. All right. And once you have that, and you can construct a bunch of loops based at X. By going through those paths. Now, now for for each disk S I, and now I want S I. Well, it doesn't matter. So, so I define a loop gamma I to be the loop that is L now inverse L I. So that's the loop I go from X. Uh, so this is this direction. Oh, oh sorry. Direction is wrong. I should. I want the direction pointing upwards from y to x. So the loop is you travel along s naught to y, and then travel along s i to x. Okay. So everyone has, uh, every desk is associated with a loop, and in particular, this special desk is a trivial, okay? Because they need to come back around the same loop. So this is a trivial, all right? 
So we can write this construction. Uh, then we're going to use left portable. So now for those, uh, well, so we're going to compare. So this, if you have any of gamma i and gamma j, I want to compare. Well, we try the bigger, and it could be equal. So, so we compare which one is bigger. Okay. So the thing is, this special disk is not is not important if you just want, want to compare. You don't you don't want to compare among those loops which one is bigger because. Let's say we take another, so if we, let's say, let's we use uh, the S, S, uh, SM as the special disk. So let's say we have, I decide not using S0, and I use I use this one, this is SM. Okay, so if I use this one and run the same construction, so you have to move, go to SM, come back to X. So if you use this as a special disk, then your loop is going to be gamma M inverse gamma I. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, L, L inverse. Lm inverse Li. Okay. Uh, then you can have another one that's going to be Lm inverse Lj. Lm inverse Li. Right. Else cancel. Yeah. So you you, you 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 sort of play with the, with the loops and uh, using the left order. Okay. So now you just do some simple things because this is equal to Lm inverse. L not, L not inverse L i, and this is L m inverse L not, L not inverse L i, and now this <coughs> is gamma, and if you call this element to be h, this is h gamma i, this is h gamma j, and you know, and gamma i is bigger or equal to gamma j if and only if this is an output wordable for the h gamma i is less than the h gamma j. Okay? okay? So you're picking which special disk is not that important. Okay, so it's not that important. So let's pick a more convenient one. Let's pick the disk, the special disk is now to be the one with the smallest relative order to be the one with the smallest uh, relative order among the values. If two of the loops are equal in the fundamental group, yeah. Does that tell you something like you picked an inefficient Hagar diagram? No, no, no. It, 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 it theoretically happened a lot. Right? So, now, as not is the smallest one, so now you know gamma not is equal to one. So that means every other loop is going to be bigger than or equal to one. So, so every Gamma i is bigger than equal to one now. Okay? Because the gamma i is the smallest one. Alright? So, so that's the loops for the disk on the Hagar uh, on the Hagar surface. And then let's take a loop dual to those disks. Okay. Uh, therefore, 
for each of these UI. And I pick another loop, pick a dual, uh, a dual loop that's in GI. So that loop is uh, so hit this disk in just one point and then miss all the points. Right? And I also want an orientation for this loop such that this GI is bigger than equal to one. Well, theoretically, this could be true. <coughs> Uh, well, well, if if the if the rank is equal to genus, it cannot be trivial. But but the theoretical, if you have a high genus, it could be trivial, and this cannot be trivial in genus two. This is another benefit in genus two. It's not. It's always strictly bigger than one if the genus is two. Okay, so this is another sort of subtle thing. Okay, so this is bigger than one, and also you can for each for each vi, you can do some similar things. You can first Travel along a L naught y, then you pick a dual loop. Okay, so that's called. Let's take this one. This is H i. You want to take this. Uh, let's say let's call this H i prime. Then we take H i to be L naught inverse H i prime L naught. So that's you, you have to travel through this back of this, okay? Uh, and also, we can require hi is bigger than equal to one, okay? So now, for the two complex, every uh, desk in the two complex, you have a loop associated to the desk, uh, to, the, to, the, to the desk, and their order, their all bigger than equal to one, okay? Right, they're all bigger than equal to one. And now let's deform this into a branch surface. Sigma, the union uh, of the U1, UG, and union of the V1, VG. So this is the two complex into, into R. Uh, I want, because they have this orientation, the sigma have this orientation pointing upwards. Pointing upwards, I want to deform this into a uh, uh, a transverse orientable or a co orientable. Branch of surface. Okay? Um, so that's a, uh, uh, that is you, uh, because it's a disk, oh, by the way, because this loop has a direction, right? So the loop has a direction. And now that means for each original disk, you have a natural direction that's come induced from the loop. So every disk has a normal direction, and every disk on the Hikar surface also has a direction pointing from, from V to U. Okay, so once you have the direction lined up, that's, uh, that's very uh, sort of elementary to just, it's just over branch surface. Okay, so if you have, I suppose this is my direction, and this is my direction, and I say this is my direction, and so if you just follow the direction, you get a real branch surface. In this case, this is this way. This way, this is the direction, this is the direction, this is the compatible direction over here, and here. This direction from this. 
how do you choose the these arrows? The so that so the on the middle surface, well, it's basically depend on the loops. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can have direction on the loops. On the middle surface, because the, you you go through the special disk, and everything you come back is always pointing up. So on the Higar surface, the direction is always pointing up. And on the on the regular disk, you depend on on those loops. That direction gives you a normal it gives normal direction for the disk. Give you that direction. Mm -hmm. And then and then the arrows specify the smoothing? Yeah, that's right. Okay? So you get uh transfer this orientable uh uh front surface. Okay. So that's sort of really uh really elementary. Uh then there is uh there is a uh, 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 sort of observation with the effect. So the fact is, remember all the loops where I have is bigger than equal to one. Gamma is bigger than equal to one, right? And especially if you have the special desk gamma now is equal to one. You have at least one equal to one. All right. Uh, let's say we pick all the desks whose uh, associated element are equal to one. Let's say it's element equal to one. Say the fact. Let's say let's define this is the set of desks. Desks uh, whose associate element uh, are equal to one. Okay, for example. That's not certainly in it. There may be some others. Okay. All right. Now the crucial fact for this is, uh, but speaking of branch surface, you have something we call the branch direction. So the branch direction is the if you look at where the cusp is. So that's called branch locus, and depending on the cusp direction, you can you have a normal. Orientation. So this is the branch direction. Branch direction. Okay. So so the fact is, uh, for NA, let's say FI in this in this set of desks, then if you look at the branch direction at its boundaries. The branch direction at its boundary edges, they're all point outwards. Okay, and this is actually fairly easy to see. Let me go a schematic picture. Okay, let me draw a one dimension lower picture. Oh gosh. Uh, so let me draw a one dimension lower picture. Okay? Let's say we have a loop here. Uh, so that's this orientation. I have a loop gamma i, and I have a loop gamma j. And I have a loop, let's say, gamma, uh, gamma s. Okay, so then by simply uh, a trivial sort of group uh, uh, addition, you can have this gamma s is equal to gamma i, gamma j. You have this kind of relation. Because each one is less bigger than equal, you can just sort of follow this. That because this one is small, uh, this one is small, is then you can sort of you can easily easily prove this. All right. So, and then what are we gonna do? We're gonna play with this front surface. Let me draw a heavy picture. Let's 
we'll have this frame surface. Okay, so over here, I have this region. I see this is just not. So this French direction is all pointing out. Okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove all of this. I'm going to remove uh, this in the set from from the branch surface. Okay? And the, the thing is, if you remove this, you also get a branch surface. Let's we just erase that. Erase this. Erase this. And erase this. So you get a branch surface. You have your the branch locus now is this arc, this arc, this arc, this arc, and branch surface. And this is sort of the converse of the, uh, the filter manifold decomposition, in fact. So because in the filter manifold decomposition, if you have a filter manifold, you want to add a surface. You want, when you meet the cost, you can do some orientation things. So the filter manifold decomposition is uh, so this is basically the same as adding a branch to a branch surface. Here, I just remove this disk. So sort of like I, I remove this thing. So this is the other direction of the, the branch, the, the structure manifold decomposition. I just remove it. Okay, so get a new branch surface. So we get a new branch surface. And the fact is, this new Branch surface. So let's call it B naught. Uh, let's say fully carry a lamination. It fully carries a lamination. Oh. Uh, fully carries a lamination. The reason for this is the reason for this is sort of again, sort of elementary removes. Let's say we have a branch surface. Let's draw a one dimension lower picture. This is this directions. Okay, so you have branches with direction and uh, you can kind of split it. Okay, so let's say call this element, because every loop we have this, every sector have a loop or so to it. Let's call this is A. This loop is B. Now I split this into this if a is bigger than b this is a this is b and this is and that split in the other direction if a is smaller than b and i i separate them if a is equal to b okay and the reason for this is when you split your branch surface, you actually create a new branch sector. To create a new branch sector, remember the, the condition of other loops. For the new branch surface sector, you have a new associated loop. <laughs> the, the component of the branch surface is connected now. And this loop, let's say this is called as gamma, uh, let's say called uh, uh, let's call it eta, so this eta is bigger than group one. Because B multiply Anna is equal to A. These labels are not transverse measures, right? Just no, it's not balance. transverse measure, of course. Yes, it's the it form the left one. Okay. Okay. So you can you can keep splitting those branch surface indefinitely using the left order. And so what's this lamination? The lamination is the inverse limit. Of, of the splitting. Okay, so the inverse limit of the splitting is because you can do that in all directions indefinitely. So that gives you a lamination carried by the branches. 
Okay, so that's the fun part and actually easy part. Now the, you want to know uh, when does this lamination extend to four ation? Okay, so the another observation is uh, let's say here this special set with all the and uh, dual uh, the, the dual element equal to one. If this is just one disk, that's not his only one. There's no other ones. If this is only disk and and if s this disk is a a two G sided uh, disk. So you have G arc from the top desk and G arc from the other desk, the two G side disk, then then this lamination extends to a top foliation. And the reason is actually very elementary because when you remove this, you got a three ball from the top and three ball from the bottom, they connect into a three ball. And because this is a 2G size arc, so all the branch locus get connected to a single curve. So that means that the complement of the branch surface is a bubble, is a D2 curve sign. You can have foliation, then just trivially extend that. Okay, so that is uh, for arbitrary genus, you can have that. Now for genus two, for genus two, the benefit of genus two is uh, you don't have to worry about the size of this disk in this set because every disk in this set is a quadrilateral. You cannot have bigon because you have bigon, that means it's not a minimum. Okay, you cannot have more size because you have more size, that means you have a wave. It's always a quadrilateral, that's easier. You don't have to worry about this thing anymore. <coughs> and you only need to worry about how many disks are in this. Okay, so then. Uh, so the idea is you remove all the disk and you get the lamination, then you try to add the disk back. Try to add the disk back. It's sort of the, the garbage suture manifold decomposition. You add the suture, you add the disk back, and you try to extend the lamination through that disk. And the, the short answer is why, why can you do that? You can pretty much always do that. So this is sort of like an original in the uh, in by suture manifold paper, you construct the suture manifold hierarchy. Why that give you a lamination? So the key thing is that the, the, the lamination construction is actually not that hard. Uh, it's that in suture manifold, you want the cut, the suture, does not bound the disk carried by the lamination. Because if it's bound the disk, let me draw a If the suture bound the disk, then we will try to add, add another sector to it. You basically get a circle with one tail. You cannot extend the lamination through that. So you, have, you have a spiral over to your curve. Okay? When, so the, the short answer is as long as you have this, you can always extend the lamination. You can, you can, again, how do you add those disks back to you again using left order? Okay, so then, uh, then, and then all the thing I didn't say is to roll out those kind of things. So that's the sort of technical part. So my, my time is up.